there. Remember, the separations can be absolute. Children and parents are going into detention in different states, no visits, no contact, nothing. Antar Davidson worked at an immigrant children's shelter in Tucson, Arizona. The conditions there are better than in many such places, actual beds and bedrooms, even classrooms for basic learning. But under zero tolerance, the children have no idea when they'll see their parents again, none. Some fear it will be never and don't understand what's going on. And so while the physical conditions are okay, their psychological state? Well, well, the psychological state of the children, particularly the ones that were um, separated from their parents, is basically just can easily, easily be summed up in the word confusion, right? If you're a child, uh, you know, there, there was about 70 children. Of the 370 of them were what's referred to as tender age. Um, and they were, you know, that means under 12. So a kid, a, a child that age who has, has, is like on a journey with their parents um, at the point that they're separated from that, their parents, and they have no idea what's going to happen. And then all of a sudden they're in a facility and people are telling them what to do. And it's, uh, it's traumatizing, I think. And I was able to really, I really observed that um, uh, in, in, in the uh, in the facility there were kids that were just dis displaying very clear signs of trauma. Anta, can I ask you about your personal experience with some of the children yeah. you were dealing with? And as a Portuguese speaker, you were dealing with Brazilian kids. So what, when you resigned in protest effectively, what was it that drove you out in the end? What did you witness? Okay, well, there was um, basically the first Brazilians that came um, first before prior to that I had noticed with the zero tolerance policy law an influx of very small children who were very traumatized so with, I'm talking kids that would be throwing class throwing chairs in classrooms running or it became a common occurrence to see a staff member chasing after a six-year-old or you know they started to use more what are called CPI holds which are conflict prevention it's from the conflict prevention Institute so that's where they will physically grab the child and, and have to, they were constantly starting to do more refresher courses. So they're, with, with these kids, the kids uh, it, acting out in trauma became, started to become very much less manageable, very young kids. So that was already the air of the place. And when the first Brazilians arrived, um, it was three Brazilians. It was the first at that facility. Um, they, it was a 16-year-old brother, a 10-year-old sister, and an 8-year-old brother. However, the staff decided that they would be, according to the rules, unfortunately, according to the rules, they were going to have to be separated into three different rooms. No one else spoke, Spanish, spoke Portuguese. So in Spanish and English, they were trying to explain to the kids that they would, each of them now, after being separated from their mother, now have to sleep in different rooms. So they called me over the radio and they said, Antar, we need you to translate this. We need you to tell them that they, you know, so, so they basically tell me, Tell them they, they were, they were, I get to the scene <laughs> and the kids are there. That, they actually told me on the radio, they said, tell them they can't hug. <laughs> the kids were, they, they said, tell them they can't hug. I didn't understand what was happening. At that time, I returned to the scene. Um, fortunately for me, this sh should be all on camera. So if they choose to test the veracity of this, I welcome them to, to share the archive. So as I, as I arrived to the scene, they told me, tell them you need to translate that they can't hug. So I, I make my way over there. I say, I, I don't know that I'm going to do that, but I'll come and help translate. So I get there, and I see the three of them. They're, they're aware now that they're about to be separated from the siblings, each, each other. And the two younger siblings are just holding on with all their might to the older brother, and they're just, they're just crying like crying as in you, you were just separated from your mother and you're about to be separated from your brother and your sister crying and they're holding each other in, in a circle and i and i come to him and I, the older brother and i say in portuguese bro you, you need to be strong now like i know this is difficult but you know this is a situation where you need to be strong and he looks at me with tears streaming down his face he says how <laughs> how can i be strong in a situation like this like look at my siblings and then the, at that point, a shift leader arrives to me, and she tells me very aggressively, tell them they can't hug. You need to tell them that they're not allowed to hug in this facility. And I, at that point, flatly said, no, 
<laughs> I, I will not. According to my, as a human being, that doesn't feel right to me, and I, w- I refuse to do that. She then told me that she would inform the shift supervisor and proceeded immediately to try to explain to them in in in, Port- in Spanish that they weren't allowed to hug in the facility as they were still weeping and, 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 and clutching each other, I would say, not even hugging, clutching, really like, please don't take me away from my brother now. And so it was at that point I tried to make change in, internally. It was at that point that I realized being in this job, I would be ordered to do things, which I think by, thankfully, as I've been shown by countless people and, and now people even in New Zealand, that not just my code of morality, but the world's code of morality, that this was that I would be told to do things that would go counter to that. Todd Davidson, who was, as you heard, working in a centre for children in Tucson, uh, but resigned in protest effectively over what he was being asked to do.